Good morning. I hope everyone is having a good day today. Uh, I think I have everything set up. Going down my checklist to make sure. Mental checklist. Seeing if I forgot anything. Nope. Okay. So. <clears throat> I hope y'all have a comfy blanket and some tea or coffee. As we're going to the Forest of Myth today, there's going to be a lot of reading. Is that a cat? No, it's a dog. Hello, doggo. Oh my gosh. Wow. Nier grew really tall. The doggo is like... Not even up to his knee now. <laughs> so cute. Hi! He's so happy. I'm sad I can't pet him. Um, let's see. What did I do off stream? Let's recount a little. Okay, so... I finished all the quests I can do. I could do yesterday. Oh, I should go check out the flowers before... That happened yesterday? Yes. Um, I should go check out the flowers before... We go to the forest of myth. I think I can replant them today. I think. Or do, do I need to wait one more day? I think I need to wait one more day. I have to... I think they have to change. Before I can harvest them and get seeds. Sleepy Thursday. Bonk my own kind. What? Ah, the home of that blasted dream. Yeah. Truly a nightmare I hope never to experience again. I hear you. Well. We have to go in again. Tree branch box. Gonna go around picking up all the shiny first. Seems normal here. We appear to have hit a dead end. Say, what is that on the ground? Oh. Uh oh. Did I trigger something? Just some funny looking berries. Ah, poisonous ones, I'd wager. Well, I'm sure not gonna eat them and find out. <laughs> Hi, Fink. How are you? Unusual is happening? Well, 
I have been feeling a rather strange presence whenever I visit the Divine Tree. Got a blanket but no tea yet, but I'm feeling good. Nice! Bed burrito, best burrito. The Divine Tree? It's a legendary tree that exists in the heart of our village. Did you investigate the cause of this presence? Not really, no. And why not? Well, you're not really supposed to go near the tree, except for prayer. <sighs> and why is that? I don't know. It's just how things have always been. Weird. Weird indeed. Let's see. This person, maybe? Wait, what? A man with a gold necklace? Uh, you know him? <laughs> you bet I do. Goddamn bastard ran off with my wife. Wait a minute. I thought he had a girlfriend. If you find him, bring him back here so I can murder the bastard. Uh, sure, I'll consider that. Listen, do you know where he went? Last I heard, someone saw him in Seafront. Goddamn bastard. I can't even bear to look at my wife anymore. Guess it's back to Seafront for us. Oh, that was the, uh, side quest. Oops. Oh, that is weird. Why do we seem to encounter nothing but odd people lately? You should talk, Vice. As if Grimoire Vice is capable of spouting such nonsense. Hang on. I don't think it's done. Oh, that's so cool. They edited the playback. It's a bit like uh, Midna in Tyler Princess. But I think Midna is backwards and then adjusted? Or was Midna scrambled? I don't remember. I think Midna was backwards and then scrambled and then this one is just they cut things in the middle. That's really cool. Does that mean it'll tell us what we want to know? That'd be nice. <laughs> Near. You know things don't go that simply ever. And here we go. Black, pure darkness, painted over everything. Words, scattered here and there across the blackness. Kind words, difficult words, amorous words, all sparkling in the dark like jewels. The words were few now, but time was shorter. Grabbing the words in desperation, the tree turned to the sky. This is wrong whispered the tree in the voice of wind through the leaves. This is not how it was supposed to be. The plan has failed. Once, long ago, the tree had remembered everything about the world. This was its task, its function, its purpose. It shivered with something approaching joy as it collects the memories of mankind. This was no accident. Emotions were as much a part of the tree as root and bark. Memories collected like dew on the thick green leaves of the tree. And once they had formed a web that spanned the entire world. Internet? Words collapsed into sunlight before passing through the leaves and into the pool of memory. From the pool, the words joined together to form colonies. The colonies united into whirlpools of light and the light coalesced into stars. Reading this now as an adult, I really do think it's about the internet. I just thought it was really pretty before. <laughs> Each star was like a child of the tree, and it loved them all. Look at my memory. A child is here, brought low by disease. He is far too young to have suffered so. Thin beyond words, the boy's skin is a shade paler than the bleached seat sheets upon which he lies. His parents no longer visit him, for they cannot bear to watch him suffer. 
The doctors have long since surrendered his faith to the gods. The boy, too, has abandoned hope. Strange emotions, weariness, hatred, swell within the dark recesses of his young heart. He tries to reject the black terror that germinates in his body, but no amount of effort or tears can drive the invader away. Is this talking about the black scrawl? His black terror? He has long ceased to resent his parents and doctors. Once he did, but now his pain is so great that there is little room in his heart to think of others. Only one person brings a boy comfort. Hey Callum, how are you? Happy Thursday. It's story time. A healthy young girl with tan skin and deep brown eyes. Oh. Is this Emil and his sister Halua? She is a beacon of brightness and light in the boy's world. Her very presence is a comfort to him. But he is unable to look upon her face. Whenever they meet, the boy is filled with loathing for his own state. This is an extension to Grandma. Oh, that's so sad. Soon, this loathing eats away at what joy he receives from the girl's visits. The girl will stop coming. He knows this, as every waking moment is spent in fear of this day. Just drinking my energy drink and installing RE8. Nice! Have fun! Are you excited for Big Lady? He thinks that if he could talk to her, if he could tell her of his feelings, this might not be so. But this conversation never happens. The girl disappears. The boy dies alone. The tree scoops up this memory and carefully stores it within itself. Etched upon it is a single word. Envy. Look at my memory. There is a female warrior. Her greatest enemy is a beast with red eyes that she cannot fully comprehend. The violin! When she strikes it in with her sword, it turns into a pillar of salt and dies. That's from Drakengard. Uh, the main enemy of Drakengard was something called some people infected with a thing called red eyes. And when you kill them, they turn into pillars of salt. And they kind of dissipate into the wind. And then the crack ending of Drakengard was they transported one of the big biggest bosses in Drakengard to Tokyo and the boss dissipated into salt and it rained down on Tokyo and caused the black, black scrawl. We'd have to come back in a bit because install is lagging my stream. Okay. Thanks for dropping by though. But when the white smoke clears, a new enemy rises, and another, and another. The warrior knows that her struggle is folly, but fighting the unending stream of enemies fills her with a sense of joy and purpose. Somewhere deep in the warrior's drug-addled mind lies a vague memory of a daughter. Perhaps the child exists only in her head. The dying remnants of a powerful dream. She does not know. So I didn't play Drakengard, so I don't know what this is referring to. I know the premise, but I can't explain what this last part means. She does not know. Her friends and fellow warriors come and go. Some flee in terror, some are eaten. She began the fight with 63 companions, but most are gone now. The warrior's body shudders. She does not understand why at first. 
By the time she hears a fierce, low sound, the arena is already enclosed in dar darkness. Looking up, the warrior sees a beast so large that it blots out the sky. She is laughing. She has been doing so for as long as she can remember. Covered in blood and dirt, the warrior laughs. She laughs and laughs until the town that contains her daughter collapses, in, collapses into a pile of dust. This memory has been stored for a long time. It is etched with a single word, loss. Look at my memory. A red dragon falls from the heavens. I think this is also Dragon Guard. I think this is Dragon Guard. One or two? Ah, that memory has been lost. A shame. It was a favorite of mine. After many centuries of existence, the tree saw that its carefully labeled memories were beginning to dwindle. Once seemingly infinite, the memories now seemed ready to disappear forever. The tree did not feel sadness at this. Grief was an emotion beyond its comprehension. I think there's brass now. It did, however, have the distinct feeling that something was missing. The mountain of memories it had so carefully assembled had disappeared. The tree stretched its branches as far as it could, but new memories refused to flow. The pool of memories was a black, empty pit, a hollow place where life had once flourished. The tree had lost its purpose. There was nothing to be done but sift through the few remaining memories littering the ground under its branches. This is why the tree was pleased when the young man and his companion entered the room. Mir says, Well, this place is gloomy as hell. The room Nir had entered was almost completely empty. All he could see were a few crystals scattered haphazardly on the ground. Picking up one of the crystals and peering into it, Nir suddenly saw a familiar sight. It was the forest of myth. It's villagers prisoners of their own dreams. Comfy! Ooh, do you have tea now? Nice. Enjoy your tea. I apologize, the tree thought. That is all that remains. As Nir stared at the jewel bewildered, a voice suddenly called out from the depths of its mind. The voice implored them to listen. It was an order. Following it was mandatory. Abruptly, the pair realized that they must listen. They must listen. Look there. A small shadowy presence appeared from beneath the floor. It appeared to be a shade. The shade grasped several jewels in its hand. More jewels tumbled out of its mouth like shards of broken teeth. Sights and sounds tingling from each one before vanishing forever. The creature was abusing the memories, treating the precious objects like a collection of cheap playroom toys. The shade appears to be consuming the memories. These things eat memories? The tree extended a branch toward near. Without a second thought, Nir brought his blade down on the shade, tearing its stomach wide. Jewels burst from the shade and poured across the chamber floor. Look, thought the tree, there is the conviction memory I had lost, and satisfaction, and many others as well. Yes, this is good. The tree opened its mouth and attempted to speak, but no sound emerged. A millennium of silence and solitude had caused the tree to forget certain things, but rather than be upset, it greeted the development with good cheer. Focusing all its power on the riddle of speech, 
the tree formed a kind of makeshift vocal cord and tried again. <clears throat> I, I implore. <coughs> it spat out a glimmering green jewel. Hmm. One more time. I implore you. There we are. What was the color of the lost envy? Brown. Envy was the sickly boy on the sheets. Who really wanted to see the girl with brown eye, brown hair, I think, I hope. Vice says, it spoke! The shade has intelligence and emotion. Who cares, says Nier. Nier brushed Vice's comet aside as his sword sliced through the shade's right arm. The shade extended its remaining arm to Nier. I must touch him. I must make contact. The tree is a shade? Oh. The moment its fingers brushed against Nier, the tree felt a warm sensation begin to burn. Something hot coursed through its fingers, up its arm, and out to its entire body. It was emotion, more than the entity had felt in centuries. The tree cried out in surprise and joy. One thousand ears alone, one thousand ears in quiet contemplation. The tree felt like it was going to break apart. For long centuries, the tree had been alone, its heart sealed with heavy chains, but no more. New, powerful emotions began to take hold, causing its heart to lighten. This was more than the simple emotions it had been designed to feel. It was the beginnings of a soul, and the young man was the key. This was the promise made long ago. This was how it would be released. The tree's stomach began to throb in pain, a new and unpleasant sensation. But the time was not yet right. I implore you, 